Okay, Librian MS release 21.4.0. Now this is a little bit different than the uh, normal videos I've been creating where I've been basically talking about core concepts of Librian MS. Um, I wanted to create something a little bit different because uh, there are a bunch of little things in Librian MS and they also have these releases every month that some things change. Um, and sometimes they're pretty big, uh, so you should be aware of them. And I thought that would be a good opportunity around these release cycles to just come out with a little video uh, talking about these new features and anything else I've discovered or anything else going on in the Librium MS world. Uh, so that's what these videos are kind of be structured around, is just talking about the release, talking about any other little things that I found or tips or tricks. Or Okay, so really the first thing I do when I get these releases is I see what changed, uh, obviously, and a lot of the times it's uh, device support. Um, you know, devices are always coming out with new versions and different models and all sorts of different things. So obviously a lot of the changes are going to be simple device uh, fixes in here. Um, but they do have other things like uh, they're fixing little things in the web GUI and graphs and learning, discovery. And uh, I'm not going to go through all these because some of these are very, very simple. And uh, they, you probably won't even notice them. You just thought that that's the way it always was because uh, some of them are just bugs and everything. But uh, there are a couple big ones in here. And probably the biggest one in this release is this service watchdog. Um, and this is in uh, regards to the Librian MS dispatcher service. And it's uh, in regards to it crashing. Uh, if you don't know what a watchdog is, it basically watches a service. And if it crashes, it restarts it. Um, now, I've had Librian MS dispatcher service crash in the past. Um, it's actually been running pretty reliably as of the last... Uh, uh, version or two, so I'm not sure if they fixed something, but uh, yeah, I really haven't had any many, much problems with it, but uh, I will be implementing this service uh, watchdog because why not? Uh, if it does ever crash, uh, at least you know you're protected. Um, and you don't have, this is not enabled by default, uh, so if you upgrade and you're not sure you want to implement this yet, don't worry about it. Your, your uh, existing uh, SystemD Librium MS Dispatcher service is going to work perfectly fine. You actually have to uh, enable uh, this unit file in this SystemD watchdog service for it to take effect. But uh, I'm going to do that here because it seems like a good idea. Um, and really, uh, it, the system D is just waiting every 30 seconds for a message that the Librian MS dispatcher service is going to send. And if it doesn't get that message within 30 seconds, it says it failed and it'll restart. So uh, we'll get that set up. And uh, Ports Group is a big one too. Uh, this has been in the works for a while, but uh, it looks like it just got uh, uh, pushed into the uh, main repo here. So uh, we'll talk about that too. I haven't actually used this yet. So this will be new to me, but this uh, is going to be probably a big feature in the future, uh, and this will be a good way of uh, grouping your ports together. So it just got implemented, so there's a lot of more uh, stuff that needs to be done in order to get the true benefit of this, but uh, you got to start somewhere, right? So uh, yeah, we'll get started with the SystemD service first, since that's uh, going to be a good one here. And uh, I guess the first thing I need to do is upgrade. <laughs> so if I go to my version here, I'm running 21.30, so let me go ahead and upgrade here. I'm going to go into my shell. Uh, did I already do it? It looks like I already did it. So, yep, I did it. Uh, and it looks like it went to 2.40. So if I refresh this page here, yep, I'm on 2.4, 21.4.0. There we go. Okay, so now if we go into this pull request here, and I usually go to files change to see what they actually did and look at the code, but uh, this is actually what I really wanted. I wanted to, to get the uh, documents of what you need to do here. And basically they're saying they, they created a new uh, system D file for you here. Um, so we need to copy this and enable it. Um, and there's also a uh, Python 3 system D package you need to install. Uh, and actually if you're going through Libyan MS from scratch, they've actually added this to the APT install that you do when you install it. So it's right here. Um, so obviously Obviously, if you already have your Liberate MS system running, we need to get this installed here. So let's go in there and uh, do a couple of these things here. We're going to do, uh, we'll switch over to root. Uh, was it system? Okay, I guess I already have it installed. Interesting. Okay, and now they want us to copy this file also. Now, this is in the docs, too, so let's go over the docs here. Dispatcher service right here. It's probably at the bottom here. System watchdog. Yeah, see, this is the original system D file that we did uh, when we originally installed it. If 
But uh, if you're starting from scratch, I would just use this one instead. Um, so we're going to have to disable the other one, but let's go ahead and copy this first. Yeah, this will create two services. <laughs> That's going to be interesting. So, okay, let's stop this and disable it. I'm going to just get rid of that. We don't need it anymore. Okay, that stopped, so now we need to disable it. Okay, and now I'm actually just going to remove this file so I don't get confused. And now we're going to do a systemctl daemon reload. Okay, that's good. So that should uh, have cleared out our old one. Yeah, we don't have anything in there. So let's go back here and do this. Okay, what did that do? <laughs> okay, okay. I thought it was going to name it LibriNMS dash watchdog service, but it just renamed it to LibriNMS dash service because I was going to say there, uh, what happened? Uh, okay, so let's just look at this real quick, because there is a watchdog statement in here, right here. So we're definitely on the right version now. So now we're running that watchdog uh, uh, service. So supposedly if this crashes it, uh, within 30 seconds, it will restart and you won't notice any difference. So uh, that looks like it's all working. Uh, pretty painless. Uh, not too bad. So yeah, if, you, if you're running Ubuntu, I really see no reason why you wouldn't do this. Uh, it looks like people have been testing it and it's been working fine. So I'm going to put it on my production unit uh, definitely here. So Okay, so let's look at port groups here. And I believe the real reason uh, this was ever started is because in the, uh, in the dashboard you have a... Uh, top interfaces little widget here and this if you have tons and tons of devices uh, this almost becomes useless because it's always going to pick the trunk ports and uh, you know all the ports with the most bandwidth and you know those you know those are going to have the most bandwidth so you really need to filter that a little bit and uh, that's where the kind of the concept of port groups came in is that you can just assign different ports to a group and then have it uh, filter just on these groups in here so let's do that real quick um, and they, they've said that they're going to add more uh, functionality uh, for these port groups in the future. So you might see them in different places in here. Um, so for now, in order to create port groups, you go to ports and manage groups, a uh, new port group, and uh, we'll just say, I don't know, WAN interfaces. So this will be the name of the group. So when you're assigning ports to port groups, you're going to select this name right here. So we'll save that. And then in order to assign... I guess you could go into all ports, but that's not really probably the best way. You need to, can you edit it from here? Yes, you can. Okay, so let me go to my firewall here. So I did say it was going to be WAN. Uh, WAN right here. So we want to put this to the WAN interface port group. Okay, okay, so let's go back to our, okay, so now we have our top interfaces here. Let's go ahead and edit this. And uh, now we should be able to select a port group WAN interfaces. All right, there we go. So now if you had a bunch of firewalls with all your WAN interfaces, now you could just see them right in this list here. Um, there was no real good way of doing this uh, before, at least in a dashboard widget. Um, there were ways, you know, obviously with the uh, port types uh, that you could do it in here, but uh, for the widget, uh, that's why I created. But I believe uh, I saw in the uh, comments uh, that they were going to kind of merge port types and port groups because they're kind of the same thing um, eventually. So yeah, those might get uh, mingled into one thing <laughs> eventually here. So, uh, okay, so another thing I wanted to talk about right here, uh, this is not in regards to the release this has been in in place forever now but uh is the overall traffic graph because i had a device that was polling perfectly fine uh i could see the interface uh perfectly fine if i clicked on the interface i would see it uh, all the stats and everything in here um, everything was fine 
except it wasn't displaying the overall traffic graph. Uh, it was just saying uh, error cannot display graph or one of the generic errors for graph drawing. Uh, and I troubleshot it forever. I could not figure out why it wouldn't display this graph. All my other overall traffic graphs worked. Uh, it was just this one particular device. And I finally figured it out. I was going through all the code because I thought I was just running into some bug with just this particular device. Um, but it didn't really make sense because all the devices kind of use this overall traffic graph. So you would think it would be broken for all of them. Uh, but as I went through the code, I figured out what it was doing. Um, because this particular device I had only... It wasn't this device, by the way. It was another device. But uh, because this device was only responding back with one interface, uh, that interface happened to be called Bond Zero. Uh, so there was only one interface. So if you only have one interface, that interface and the overall traffic graph are going to match up exactly. Um, so that interface was called Bond Zero, and in the documentations, by default, they actually uh, remove these interfaces from the overall traffic graph. So any of these types uh, of traffic uh, ports or interfaces, uh, here's Bond, <laughs> it started with Bond, so that's why it got removed, um, will not show up in the all tra overall traffic graph. And because I only had one interface, it had nothing else to graph in the overall traffic graph, so it gave me an error. Um, so that might be something you want to look at um, if you're using those overall traffic graphs a lot, uh, and especially if you have any of these interfaces, you might want to go in there and either remove these uh, or be aware of them at least. Okay, so the, really the last thing I've been working on uh, in the past month or so is this Docker Stats app. And I didn't actually create the Docker Stats app. Somebody else did that. But um, I tried to deploy it because I have Docker containers, uh, Librium MS Polars that are Docker containers. And I wanted to monitor those. Uh, why not? More stuff you can monitor, the better. So uh, I went through the process of setting it up, getting it all working, and it didn't work in my installation, uh, in my production installation. Um, I set up a brand new installation. Uh, installation from scratch and it worked perfectly fine so I knew there was some bug going on with uh, my production setup to where uh, a new setup was in and I determined uh, what it was after a lot of uh, snooping around in the code and it was because I was running RRD cache D on a separate server than my web uh, GUI installation or web server. Uh, if you're running your RRD cache D on the same server, you're not going to have any of these problems. Uh, but if you're running RRD cache D separately on a separate server, I'm finding out there's a lot of things that kind of break when that set in that kind of a setup. Uh, so uh, generally, I've always said kind of move your RRD files uh, to a separate server because that's doing a that's probably doing the most disk writing out of anything, um, and that can save you a lot uh, of uh, disk I/O resources on your web server and database server. Um, but <laughs> looking like you might want to keep your uh, web GUI and RRD cache D on the same server and move your database to a separate server, I don't think anything breaks in that in that scenario. So um, that might be a better way of going about this. But regardless. Uh, I think it should work uh, if you have RRD cache D on a separate server. So I went through the process of uh, figuring out what was wrong and um, actually submitted a pull request for it. Uh, and it's out there now. Um, I actually determined that all these applications do not work uh, if you run RRD cache D on a separate server. Uh, so if you try to use any of these applications, uh, they're, they're not going to work. Um, but luckily, I created a... Uh, a patch for it or a pull request for it and it's out there now and uh, I've been going back and forth with the devs and uh, yeah it looks like uh, I, don't, I don't see anything. It works for me. So uh, I'm not a, the PHP uh, uh, developer uh, uh, guru, but uh, yeah, it, it all works. Uh, so you can try this uh, this pull request out. And you can actually, uh, if you ever want to try any of these out, um, you just need to run this script here uh, on your installation, this dot scripts github dash apply, and then this number up here. And then this will basically apply this patch to your installation. So if you're running RD cache D on a separate server and you want to use some of those applications, uh, then put this on there and let us know what breaks or what, what what's wrong with it. <laughs> I actually have only fixed the Docker because I have to do some other uh, changes for the other, other applications to work with this. So only Docker uh, I did right now. Um, but after they approve that, I'll go through and uh, fix the other ones I had in here. Here we go. Here are all of them. Okay, so I think that's all I have uh, for this video. If you guys have any ideas, please leave a comment. Uh, anything you want to discuss, uh, please let me know. Um, I will create a couple more videos about the uh, 
core concepts. There are things like weather map and the Nagio services and uh, maybe just a couple other things like config options and some of the network map features. Um, uh, I wanted to go over those. I've just been very busy lately, so I haven't gotten around to it. But no, don't worry, they will be coming. Uh, thank you again for watching.